these boot style seats aren't entirely practical but it was going to be so much work to modify the module into a square unit to make it into a perfect bed that uh, you know quite frankly i'm sort of in a shrug and go approach right now however we were going to have him make the cushion for our helm seat um, but I've decided we're going to try to get on the water as quick as possible. We've decided to buy a commercially available one. So we've bought this relaxing double seat. Now it actually switches back and forth. We're not going to be able to use that function because of the hard top there. Although you could get there and, and use it as a nice place to have drinks to look at over the top. But what I have to do is I have to design and build a frame for it. And uh, if you like, don't like my Merbauer laminated glue laminated slabs which weigh actually more than the boat um, then i'm going to basically make a stainless frame and how i'm going to do that is i've bought some 50.8 mil 316 stainless and some connectors these are basically balustrading connectors and i'm going to get them all put together in a framework and then i'll either have them welded or i'll weld them myself and here doing my welding offered to do a little bit more welding for me i may even give it a crack myself because uh, you know i like to do everything myself so what i've actually decided to do is i've actually cut up a fair amount of sections here and I'll just show you how this is intending to be put together uh, in situ here. Now it took a bit of working out how I was going to do this. This actually has the ability to slide back and forth and I may well use the sliders because it has mounts underneath it here. There's two, there's one lot there and you can see the stun screws there and one lot there and I could potentially buy the sliders and slide them back and forth and mount them on a base plate. So my intention here is I've got a 90 degree uh, outlet here straight up to a 90 degree bend and then I'll have a straight bar over there with two plates to bolt into the seat and then I'll have a further support coming out of here in the center of it coming up to the hard top here just to give it more support it is quite high and it sort of needs to be because to sit there for me to be able to see over the bow um, I need to be that high. That means Janet's going to have to climb, almost have to climb a ladder to sit up on this. So I'll do a further step down here, which won't come past about the edge of the staircase here that she can stand up on and make herself comfortable. So there's a lot to think about here uh, in designing this. And for now, I've actually got all the parts cut. I'm just going to sort of position it in place and hope that that works really well. Oh, these have been sat here for about a week. That weighs about 25 kilos. That's right. So these, these. That's looking pretty flash. Perfectly. It's a good quality, uh, good quality 316 stainless frame. And where the sliders mount, I'll actually weld a plate onto the top here with a gusset down here and here, so I can actually bolt the seat to the plate. Often the concept's harder than the actual execution. Um, right here, look, I'm happy with the design, especially if I can get a footstep on the bottom of it, which won't be that hard to do, but the one thing that's really irking me about all this, and I really don't think I'm gonna have a, a choice here, is that I've lost this seat. I've actually, haven't lost the storage, but I've lost the seat here. You can still sit there, but you're gonna hit your head, head on this thing. Um, that's gonna have to be straightened up because I still need to drop the roof down about uh, 50 millimeters. So that, that's just a temporary placement there. I've taped it all together. I've got the seat suspended. I'm gonna live with it for a little while. I think a lot of this is just putting it up, live with it. I like the, the first, the, the two uprights and the fact that I've been able to fabricate that just out of pieces. And the other thing too, is it won't be able to slide back. Uh, it might be able to slide back just a little bit, but the backrest will be a problem. So if it slides back, then that'll uh, render that backrest useless or that upright will be in the wrong place. The good thing about it is it's an extra handhold. So we've got a handhold here, we've got another one here. Uh, it's a bit like, starting to look a bit like a bloody train with all of its handholds, but it certainly is going to support it there's no doubt about that i'll probably have to put a crossbar in it i'm seriously thinking about having another line bag over on the side on the other side over there because i think i'm going to need it for our additional lines and that could be you know suspended here somewhere 
which I quite like the idea because that way everything's sort of nice and neat and in the same area I've got a big line box there but certainly not enough to handle the nine lines that are going to be coming down across this um, helm station. Some time ago we began what is now a four month exercise to rectify a flaw in the design of the cap. Janet and I have individually glued and shaped over 1500 pieces of foam core to the spine we installed and after several shaping sessions we have applied fairing compound and refared to a desired finish that now needs to have an initial flow coat applied to begin the final shaping and design. This modification has taken some considerable effort to get it right and we believe that we've struck a good balance between form and function in the end. I've chosen to roll flow coat on this time to fill micro pinholes left in the fairing process and sand down for a final spray process which may take several goes to get the finish as we want it. Just this week I saw a tragic video on YouTube of a yacht in the Pacific with a broken rudder stock that led to the sinking of the vessel as the damage was catastrophic. This situation also occurred to a catamaran off our coast some years back when the rudder struck a sunfish leading to the loss of the catamaran within minutes as no bulkhead existed in that design also. To see a design that clearly had no watertight bulkhead in the compartment that is prone to damage is worrying for me and the reason why I installed a completely sealed bulkhead between the rudder bearing compartments and the remainder of the catamaran. The whole hull extension can literally be holed without losing buoyancy and I now want to install independent bilge pumps in these compartments to buy us time, so to speak, to enact a repair or to seal the breach. All bilge pumps in this catamaran have been carefully wired to either be in automatic operation or simply on. There is no off position for any bilge pump on this boat. I also have a 3500 gallon per hour remote bilge pump with extension hose that can be thrown into the compartment as an extra safety feature when cruising. All right, we're about to finish out these stern uh, hull extensions and we're still working on the bilges. So this one here is going to have a bilge and I bought these brackets because I like them. We used to fit them into the kayaks. We used to do bilge pumps in the sea kayaks for the Australian Canoeing Award. And the great thing about it is it's reversible, so you can have it on either way. Now one area I want to tidy up, I want to actually put flow coat around here where I've laminated, but you'll notice here that I've actually left the rim of the bearing here free of laminate, and I also intend to leave it free of flow coat so that if I ever need to replace it, I hope that I can dremel it out and pull it out. I imagine they are semi-removable. I know the ports that uh, the 5200's holding it in place there, I'm um, sort of hoping that I can get something down there, an oscillating tool or something down in there to remove it should I ever need to. Uh, similarly on the bottom as well, obviously it has to be a haul out, but I could replace this one technically in situ while it's in the water if this were the one to wear. Now I don't anticipate much wear. Uh, the good thing about having the sleeves that match the bearing is you should end up with very little play in it and it's gonna take a fair knock or some serious damage to warrant replacing these bearings anytime soon. I should get you know, hopefully five to 10 years out of them if I keep them clean and the pearl lip seals they're a different story. They, they do need to be replaced every couple of years. The great thing is the way that I've set this up, I was actually, I've actually set it up so that I can replace them whilst we're in the water. So that bearing there is basically separate to the cap here and then there's a slip ring on the top which makes the whole thing um, obviously move around freely. So I'll actually mask the top of this to make sure that I keep it free flow coat relatively easy to remove. Think about this stuff. So I was just about to get started. I thought, oh, better do that. Or down the track, someone, myself or someone else, another owner of the boat might 
curse me for that. Hopefully it's me, that I'll get enough time to enjoy the boat. That's pretty good. It's as good as it needs to be. Now I'm actually going to have to make a base for the float switch to sit on because I do not want to screw through that because that's actually solid glass hull there so I can't screw into that. I've also finished the rudder shelf here and the reinforcement so that's all now for like uh, it looks beautiful and what I'll do once I'm finished dicking around and fitting everything in I'll re flow coat this floor here make it nice and clean for when we're barefoot and traveling. Got to the point I'm trying to get to the end of the spraying so that I can start to install stuff because once everything's sprayed and polished I don't have to worry about getting over spray or you know little droplets of gel coat or anything and one of those big areas is here this fridge has been sprayed twice and every time we polish it back we reveal some pinholes and that's often the problem with gel coat um, when you spray it or flow coat you always end up with pinholes because it has a thickener in it and that thickener can often be some sort of a talc that you know sometimes it separates and uh, you do end up with quite a, a chalky surface until you go into your final polishes so I'm just going to go and dump a cup of really fine thinned out flow coat I'm going to add about five percent of styrene into this mix just to thin it out a little and now most of this opening actually gets cut out because the fridge is quite large in there and I'm going to get this basically sprayed down along this margin here uh, along the kickboard the kickboard's a problem because you've got to spray underneath but I'm going to do it as best I can and all the way along get this done and that will actually signal the end of the spraying inside this saloon and that's pretty bloody fantastic for me because that means everything I do from now on is the finishing <laughs> <laughs> now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grey flow coat out the inside of this fridge robe which is quite large and I intend to actually use it for storage as well. I'll probably put a hatch down in the side down here. There's going to be a big four gang light switch hanging there and the rest of it will pretty much be the fridge compartment. Now I will have room in the end there whether I decide to put another uh, hatch in the end there just for vertical storage will depend on how much room I've got in there once I get the fridge in place. But yeah, it's all looking pretty good. I'll just get this sprayed up. It won't take me long, probably about half an hour's work. And then I can kick it in the guts, so to speak. I do need to remove that other window there because I don't want any overspray on these windows. Now, it may not look any different to you, but it looks massively different to me. <laughs> From this viewpoint, that just needs a quick polish now, and that's going to come up like it was a moulded part. And that's been the whole method here to make sure everything in the place looks like it was actually out of a mould and, uh, and production quality. Um, I've got a lot of cleaning up to do, but, you know, pretty much that's it for the internal spraying. I may have to do a little touch-up in a couple of the heads, but that's absolutely brilliant to get that done. Yeah, and I can pull off the masking tape, and now I can... Relax a bit. It's the only thing the other day I'm dying to get rid of the brown paper on the inside of the windows. It's just darkening the whole thing. You know, although I've removed it over here, it is such a different environment when you haven't got all this brown paper. But the only way I can do that is to get in and buff all the surfaces because I don't want the polish residue getting all over my new window. So I'm going to leave it on there. I'm about to buff the top of the dinette module here. The Janet has spent days polishing this down, all of my flow coating, and then we've got it down to a really nice finish. And now I'm going to give it a buff with the machine. We'll get it all buffed up, get it nice and shiny, and I'll never need doing it again other than maybe a little bit of hand buff. And what that'll also mean is that I can remove the window plastic or the paper that's on these and I don't want to leave it on too long because it is, we've had some 40 degree days and I really don't want this stuff sticking 
although I'm not out in the sun, uh, I'm definitely finding that uh, some things are just sticking uh, not very nicely to stuff because of the heat that I've got generating in here and uh, we've got another 42 degree day tomorrow. Now because I've wet sanded this, effectively you're doing a restoration, even though it's a new surface, it's not a polished new surface, so you really need to start right down at the bottom with a cut and prepare mixture. Um, I tend to use a, something like this, a cut and prepare fiberglass polish just on that first pass and then we'll go on to finer and finer and finer until we finally get to the last polish. Right, that's all buffed up. That looks just absolutely amazing given that it's just like five pieces of fiberglass joined together. It's all been polished, blended, fared, sprayed, sanded and put together and it's absolutely perfect. There's probably only a couple of tiny little divots in that that I'd even be concerned about and I'm seriously not concerned about that. Now I put the lounge back in, take a couple of photos and be proud of my work. may not be a big difference to you guys but it is to me at least it's got some reflective <laughs> benefit now it looks a lot cleaner and a lot neater now with that all off it may not look much different but it really is a massive lift and when I remove those outer ones in about a month's time it's going to totally change my life <laughs> 